Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some common mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. A flight attendant is a person who takes care of the passengers. They answer to their questions, to their requests, and they offer food and drinks. We cannot say they answer to their questions. When I use answer as a verb, I cannot use the preposition to. So correctly, it should be, they answer their questions. But if I use answer as a noun, then I need to use the preposition to. Example, I have an answer to your question. In this case, answer is a noun, so we need the preposition to. I have an answer to your question. But if I use a verb and I say, I can answer your questions. In this case, answer is a verb and I cannot use the preposition to. I cannot say, I can answer to your questions. We don't use to in this case. We say, I can answer your questions. Let's practice. Do you have an answer to my question? That's right. I have an answer to your question. Let's practice. Can you answer my questions? That's right. I can answer your questions. This is also not correct. The baggage claim is a conveyor belt with all the baggages, with all the suitcases on top of it. We cannot say with all the baggages. Because the word baggage is not countable, we cannot say one baggage or two baggages. It's always in the singular form, baggage. It's a singular non-countable noun. Only baggage, never baggages. So both words, baggage and luggage, are non-countable. We cannot say one luggage or two luggages. We cannot say one baggage, two baggages. It's just baggage or luggage. What's the difference? They're really the same thing. It's just when you hear the words. You'll hear and see the word baggage in an airport. But when people talk in normal conversational English, luggage is more common. Example, I'm going on a trip and I need to buy some new luggage. You would never say I'm going on a trip and I need to buy some new baggage. We use luggage in this case. It's more common in conversational English. Let's practice. Are you going on a trip? Do you need to buy some new luggage? That's right. I'm going on a trip and I need to buy some new luggage. Never luggages and never baggages. And at the airport, they use the word baggage. It's more common at the airport. So I can say, I don't like to check my baggage at the airport because I don't like to wait in line. Let's practice. Do you like to check your baggage at the airport? That's right. I don't like to check my baggage at the airport because I don't want to wait in line. And I think one of the reasons that baggage is less common than luggage in conversational English is because the word baggage has two meanings. You can talk about someone's personal issues in their history and refer to it as baggage. For example, she was divorced four times, so I think maybe she has some baggage, some personal issues in her history. Again, so if she's been divorced four times, she probably has some baggage. Let's practice. How many times has she been divorced? That's right. Do you think she has some baggage? Yeah, I think she has some baggage too. This is also not correct. In the check-in desk, they may ask you to put your luggage on the scale. I cannot say in the check-in desk. Because we're talking about a desk, we have to use the preposition at. At the check-in desk. We cannot use in. Oh, I saw a pamphlet at the check-in desk. When you talk about a desk or things like a desk, for example, a table, a counter, or a register, we use the preposition at. Example, he's doing his homework at his desk. We hear the pronunciation at his, at his, at his desk. The H in his is silent because his is not an important word. It's not stressed. And now the T phonetically is between vowels. So the T changes to a fast D and you hear at his, at his. He's doing his homework at his desk. Hello? Could I speak to Rob? He's not at his desk. Can I take a message? Jack Campbell's still at his desk. You know, I just opened the door and he was just there at his desk. His head in his hands, crying. I see your pal there down at her desk like every other day. Stacy has a postage meter at her desk. Let's practice. Is he doing his homework at his desk? That's right. He's doing his homework at his desk. 
Or if I talk about a table, I use the preposition at. They're eating at the table. They're not eating on the sofa. They're eating at the table. And we were all asked to sit at the table and to make out our last will and testament. Hey, Ben. Can you please not do that at the table? Player X was the best player at the table, and tonight, this guy was the worst. Sarah, there's no talking at the table. Let's practice. Where are they eating? That's right, they're eating at the table, where they're supposed to eat. My kids like to eat on the sofa, and I tell them, don't eat on the sofa, eat at the table, where you're supposed to eat. Or if I talk about a counter, I use the preposition at, at the counter. I prefer to order at the counter. I like to go inside and order at the counter. I don't like to use the drive through I prefer to order at the counter. I'm at the counter and all of a sudden, boom, I see him rolling past the window. That's right. Uh, I can see them at the counter and they're ordering. What about you? Do you like to use the drive through or do you prefer to order at the counter? Very good. Or if I talk about the register. The register is on the counter, so we use the same preposition, at. At the register. Example, you're supposed to pay at the register. But not at the register, in back with Harry. Hey, you know Connie's by herself at the register, right? Take you guys over to the boxing section and then I'll set you up at the register. No, sir. This kid here at the register thinks that it might have went south. I will meet you up front at the register. Let's practice. Where are you supposed to pay? Are you supposed to pay at the register? That's right, you're supposed to pay at the register. So remember, we cannot say in the check-in desk. Because you're talking about a desk, you have to say at. At the check-in desk. Just like a table, a counter, or a register, use the preposition at. This is also not correct. Those products will have to be checked if they are not for personal use. That is what happens at the customs. I cannot say that's what happens at the customs. When I talk about customs, the area in the airport, customs, I cannot say the. You can use the preposition at, at customs, or you can use the preposition in, in customs. I think in customs is more common, but at is also correct. Just remember, you cannot say the. You cannot say in the customs or at the customs. Just in customs or at customs. Maybe he's stuck in customs. You guys going to be in customs for another half an hour. All right. Yeah, um, they're still stuck in customs. Oh, God. We got separated in customs. What if I had gotten stopped at customs? Did you ever think of that? Example. He got stuck in customs for two hours. He had a lot of bags, and they had to check all those bags, and he had to fill out a lot of paperwork, and there was a long line. So he got stuck in customs for two hours. Not in the customs, just he got stuck in customs for two hours. Let's practice. How long did he get stuck in customs? That's right, he got stuck in customs for two hours. Now let's talk about pronunciation. This is not correct. You can download my 400-page English book. It's not correct to say you can download my 400-page English book. The pronunciation is download. We see the word download or the word load, you have OA together. Normally, OA together makes a long O sound, like no and go. So it's pronounced load, load, together download. We see this in words like load, road, and coat. OA making the long O sound. Just walk right into pre-crime, get into the temple, somehow tap into these precogs, and then download this minority report. Stark, download the files from the Event Horizons computers. Well, I uh, download the mind, unpack the data. I just think our fathers didn't download all the great dad software. Well, you have to upload the application. We have to get clear of the cruiser. Load the transports. Every evening, I load up the cart and make my round. Joseph, did you load that gun? Like, I hate the way that you load the dishwasher. Example, I don't like to download a lot of apps on my phone. What about you? Do you like to download a lot of apps on your phone? Very good. This is also not correct. But the economy class is the cheapest. And it's usually in the main body of the plane with less leg space. I cannot say the main body of the plane. The word is pronounced body, not buddy. The O is a short ah sound like hot and stop. Ba, body. You need to make an open sound. Ah. 
the main body of the plane. It's correct to say the main body of the plane. It's the main part. If I wind this up and then let go, why doesn't the propeller stay still and the body of the plane spin around? The body of the jogger who died of an apparent heart attack in Lippitt Park today was identified as Judge Thomas Spangler, a Rhode Island state judge in domestic court. I respect the mind's power over the body. So, the body that came in from New Crown yesterday, Sir Brantner? Excuse me, sir! But what about the body that fell out the window? So it's a little confusing. If you have these words, nobody, somebody, and anybody, the word is pronounced buddy, with the short uh sound like cup and up. Again, nobody, anybody, somebody. In these words, we pronounce it uh, buddy. But nobody knows that except you and my husband. Well, nobody knows where or when. See, nobody knows where the hell we are. Nobody knows why. Nobody knows where he is. Nobody knows where I am. He's a runner for the fat man, but nobody knows where he lives. Elliot, I swear to God, somebody is stealing from me. Okay, look, somebody wants to kill Rocket, let's say. Somebody wants to kill Leon? Mm -hmm. My Leon? Well, you tell him that uh, somebody wants to give the big bear a bear hug. I hope someday somebody wants to hold you for 20 minutes straight, and that's all they do. If it was anybody else in my corner, I wouldn't do it. Can anybody else yeah. relate to that? Is there anybody else in the park service I can call? I do, Mac. I want to go with you. Chez, all right. Anybody else? Where? Any bar downtown. You see anybody else in here? But if you just have the one word, body, then the sound changes and we have to use the more open sound. Ah, body. Like hot and stop. Ah, body. This is also not correct. A stopover or a layover basically means you have to stay there for a while until you catch your connecting flight. The word is pronounced while. Not while, but while. The L is different. If I use a light L, it would sound like this, while. But it's a dark L. While, o o o. While, o o o. So keep watching for a complete explanation of the difference between the dark L and the light L. Today we're going to practice with different pronunciations of words like these following their spelling patterns and pronunciation patterns. And we're going to pay attention to the difference between the dark L and the light L and practice with both. Let's get started. First we see this word, cruel. We see the U-E-L at the end. We do not pronounce it cruel. We're not pronouncing the E. We're pronouncing the U-E together as the sound U, cru, leaking it to a dark L, cruel. It sounds like pool and cool. You have the long U sound followed by the dark L, pool, cool, and this word is cruel. It's the opposite of kind. It means to be very mean to somebody. You are cruel to somebody. Don't be cruel to other people. Be kind. So the dark L is the same position as a light L. You put the tongue up, touching the roof of your mouth, not your teeth, behind your teeth. And what's different is your tongue is not straight. It goes a little high in the back. Oh, oh. And the bottom of the tongue expands. It gets bigger to make the dark L. So cruel, oh, oh, oh. That's the dark L. Cruel. And it's not cruel. There's kind of an extra sound, and where it comes from is, when you say ooh, your mouth is in a more closed position. Cru. And when you make the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit. O, O. So when you link those sounds, when the mouth opens a little bit, you get a little bit of an extra sound. But it's not a. Uh, it's not an extra vowel. It's one vowel. Cruel. O. Your mouth opens, and you make an extra little sound. Cruel like pool and cool. Example, this boy is not kind to animals. He's cruel to animals. Use the preposition to, pronounced t, cruel to, cruel to animals. This boy is cruel to animals. Let's practice. Is this boy cruel to animals? That's right. He's cruel to animals. He's not a nice boy. Now let's look at this word with a similar spelling pattern and a similar pronunciation. Gruel. 
Again, we see the U-E-L making the long oo sound, followed by a dark L, just like in the words pool and cool. Gruel. Gruel is a kind of food. It can be made like oatmeal, but it's not so thick. It's usually thinner. And in America, it's known for being bad. It's not a good food. So if you want to complain about some food that you don't like, it's very soupy and thin. You can say, this stuff tastes like gruel. I'm not eating this. Example, I don't want gruel for breakfast. I want something better. I want a better breakfast. What about you? Do you want gruel for breakfast or do you want something better? Very good. Now let's compare these two words. Gruel is a kind of food. It ends with a dark L because the L is after a vowel. It's at the end of the word after a vowel. That's when you use a dark L. Gruel. But if I put ing after it, now I have an L between vowels. If you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L. So it's a little different. Grueling. Ling. Grueling. What's different? Well, the light L, you don't expand at the bottom of the tongue. You don't raise the back of the tongue. You just make it straight. Uh, uh. The tip of the tongue is in the same position. It's touching the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth, but not touching your teeth. Uh, uh. Grueling. Grueling. Use the long oo, and when it connects, when it links to the light L, it sounds a little different. Listen. Gruel and grueling. It's not so dark. Grueling. Now, grueling is completely different from gruel. Grueling is an adjective. It's to describe something that's very, very difficult. It's not just hard. It's so difficult that it's like torture. It's similar to something that's like punishing you. Very difficult. Example, running a marathon is grueling. It's very, very difficult. It's like torture. It's punishing. What do you think? Is running a marathon grueling? That's right. Running a marathon is grueling. Also notice with the U-E-L, we don't say U-L. It's not grueling. It's grueling. Use the long U plus the light L. Grueling. It's grueling. It's horrible. Now let's take a closer look at the difference between the light L and the dark L. We see with these two words, listen and allow, we use the light L. How do you know? Well, when you have an L at the start of a word, before a vowel, that's a light L. L, -l listen, listen. The tongue is touching the roof of your mouth, right behind the teeth. Listen. And the tongue is flat and straight. It's not raised in the back. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's just straight. Listen. And with the word allow, you see the L, here the double L, is between vowels. When you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L also. Allow. Allow. Now let's look at these two words. Call and milk. These are both dark L's. Because you have the L at the end of the word after a vowel. After a vowel, we use a dark L. Call. After a vowel, at the end of the word, we use the dark L. Call. Or if the L is after a vowel, but before a consonant. It's not between vowels. It's between a vowel and a consonant. The L is after a vowel, but before a consonant. This is also a dark L. Mil. Milk. It's not milk. It's milk. O. O. The tongue gets fatter at the bottom. It expands, and it goes up a little bit in the back. L, L, milk. The L in milk is also a dark L. Now let's look at other words ending in U-E-L and see the different pronunciations we have. The first word is dual. Dual. We see U-E-L making the same sound as before, like pool and cool. Dual. And it ends with a dark L because the L is after a vowel at the end of a word. Dual. This is a dual. They're fighting a duel. And you can also use duel as a verb and add ing. They are dueling. Now what changed? Now the L in dueling is between vowels. So we have to change that L to a light L. So it's not dueling, it's dueling. Dueling. 
They're dueling. Somebody's going to die. It's not a good idea. They shouldn't duel. So see the difference? Duel with a dark L and dueling with a light L. Because the L is between vowels and the word dueling. And it's not dueling. Don't pronounce that E. It's one sound. Ooh, plus a dark L. Duel and dueling. Let's practice. What are they doing? Are they dueling? That's right. They're dueling. Not a good idea. They should solve their conflict some other way. Now let's look at this word, fuel. We see the same spelling pattern, U-E-L at the end, but this one's a little different. We're going to use the I sound. F, fuel. Not fool, but fuel. We have the same long U sound after the Y, so it's U, plus the dark L. Fuel. Fuel. Not fuel. Remember, when you link the U plus the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit, but it's not a real syllable. It's like this. Fuel. Fuel. This is fuel. And fuel can be a verb, too. I can say they're fueling the jet. They're putting fuel in the jet. So I can say they're fueling the jet. Now we see the word fueling with the L between vowels. So it's a light L now. It's a little different. Fueling. Not fueling, but fueling. The light L is straighter. Uh, uh, fueling. They're fueling the jet. We can't leave yet because they're still fueling the jet. Let's practice. Can we leave or are they still fueling the jet? That's right. We can't leave yet. They're still fueling the jet. So let's review all the words we've learned that end with U-E-L. The first one was cruel, then gruel, also dual and fuel. We see with the first three, they're pronounced pretty much the same. Cruel, gruel, and dual. They all have the oo sound plus a dark L. Ool. Like pool and cool. But remember, with fuel, we have the same spelling pattern, but the pronunciation's a little different. We put that y sound in there. Fia, fia, fuel. So all four words, cruel, gruel, dual, and fuel. Now let's look at a different spelling pattern with the same pronunciation. This word, jewel, it's pronounced the same as cool and pool. You have the long oo sound plus the dark L. There's no extra vowel. It's not jewel, it's jewel, like pool and cool. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L, oo. The mouth opens a little bit, it makes a little extra sound, jewel. Jewel. This is a jewel. A ruby, for example. A ruby is a jewel. And if I make something with this jewel, I call it jewelry. So the first sound, jewel, plus re. Together, jewel, re. And what about the L? Does it change? No, it doesn't change. It's still a dark L. Because you have the L before a consonant. The L is not between vowels. When the L is between vowels, that's a light L. But this is still a dark L. Just like jewel, the L stays the same in jewelry. Let's practice. What is a ruby? That's right. A ruby is a jewel. And what about this? Is this expensive jewelry? That's right. This is expensive jewelry. That was difficult. Let's do something a little easier. Let's look at these words. These words are all the same. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. You see the same spelling, double O plus L, and the same pronunciation. It's the long oo sound plus the dark L. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. Now let's change one word. Let's change cool to cooling. Now the L in cooling. Is it a dark L or a light L? That's right. It's a light L because it's between vowels. So let's hear the difference. Cool has a dark L at the end, but cooling has a light L. Do you hear the difference? Cool. Cooling. Cooling. Not cooling, but cooling. 
the tongue is straighter. The tongue is straighter and thinner. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's not coming up at the bottom. It's just straight. Example, this is a cooling system. And it's a very complex cooling system. I don't understand how it works. It's really complex. It's a complex cooling system. Let's practice. Is this a complex cooling system? That's right. This is a complex cooling system. Now we see another spelling pattern. U-L-E. The first word is rule. But the second word is not mule, it's mule. So it's a little different. Let's talk about mule. What is a mule? A mule is an animal. It's a mix of a horse and a donkey. The horse and the donkey get married and they have a baby. And that baby is a mule. It looks a little like a horse and a little like a donkey. That's a mule. And it doesn't matter if it's a boy mule or a girl mule. We call them both mules. And here's a fun fact. If you get two mules together, they cannot have babies. They cannot have children. It's impossible. Only a horse and a donkey can make a mule. And they're hard workers, but they're kind of stupid. They're kind of slow. But mules work hard. They're more popular in the southern states in the United States. The southern part of the United States has a lot of mules. Let's practice. Do mules work hard? That's right. Mules work hard. So remember, mule has the y, y sound. M -y mule. Finish with a dark L because the L is at the end of the word after a vowel. Mule. Now let's talk about rule. With rule, we don't say rule. There's no y. It's just ru, dark L, o, rule. Example, you need to follow the rules. But what if I change the word rule to ruler? Now the L is different. Is it a dark L or a light L? That's right. It's a light L because it's between vowels. So it's not ruler. It's ruler. Ruler. Use a light L. It's straighter. L -l -l ruler. Ruler. And what is a ruler? A ruler is a measuring device like this. In America, it's 12 inches or one foot. You also have centimeters on an American ruler, but the length is always one foot. If you go to other countries, you might find a ruler that's 20 centimeters. It's a little shorter, but it's still a ruler. I used to use rulers in school. When I was in school, I used a ruler. What about you? Did you use a ruler when you were in school? Very good. So we see the L's are different there. When you said school, you used a dark L. Because the L is at the end of the word, after a vowel. School. And when you said ruler, you used a light L. Because the L is between vowels. Very good. Also remember, a ruler is always a stick. If it's longer, a longer stick. For example, this is a yardstick. It's three feet in the United States. 36 inches. And if it's not a stick, then it's called a tape measure or a measuring tape, not a ruler. But there's another kind of ruler. Also, a king can be a ruler, an emperor, a czar. They can all be rulers. For example, Napoleon. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Let's practice. Was Napoleon the ruler of France? That's right. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Now let's look at words ending in U-L-E that have multiple syllables. They're not one-syllable words like rule and mule. They have multiple syllables. First, let's talk about this word because it has two different pronunciations. Some people stress the first syllable only, and some people stress both syllables. If you stress both syllables, you say schedule, schedule. And you say schedule, 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 schedule. Let's hear some examples. To stay on schedule for the test, you're going to have to be finished in eight days. Okay? Okay. The Death Star will be completed on schedule. Everyone in favor of changing the schedule, please raise your hand. But um, what if your schedule changes? And some people pronounce it differently. They say schedule, schedule. And they put the stress only on the first syllable. Schedule. Let's hear some examples. 
You know, I'm sure having a schedule where it's not hectic. So it's the shooting schedule for the day that Celia died. What about next week? What's your schedule like? Okay, then let's talk about coming up with a schedule for visitation rights. Call my secretary and have her schedule a lunch. Finish the work schedule for next week. Did it I type up the schedule for the trucking fleet. So in both pronunciations, we end with a dark L because the L is after a vowel at the end of the word. Schedule. Schedule. One is longer. Schedule. And it has an extra sound. It's not like pool and cool. It's schedule. O, O, O. There's an extra vowel there. Or you can make it short and say schedule. Schedule. Also, we notice the D-U making the J sound, like in juice and jump. J -j -j. Schedule or schedule. Example, I have a flexible work schedule. What about you? Do you have a flexible work schedule? Very good. Now let's change the word with I-N-G. Scheduling. Scheduling. He has some scheduling conflicts. Pronunciation. When I say schedule, I have a dark L. But when I say scheduling, is it dark or light? That's right, it's light because the L is between vowels. Scheduling. So you can say scheduling with the stress on the first syllable. Scheduling. Or you can say scheduling and make it longer on the second syllable. Scheduling. But in both words, the L is a light L because it's between vowels. Let's practice. Does he have any scheduling conflicts? That's right. He has some scheduling conflicts. He needs to fix his schedule. And we have this word, module. With module, the stress is on the first syllable. So the second syllable is short. Module. And we see the D makes the J sound, like juice and jump. Module. D-U in the middle of the word usually makes the J sound. So a module can be a lesson in a teaching or training system. Example, she's working on module two. She's still working on module two. And we see with the word, we use the dark L because it's after a vowel at the end of the word. Module. She's still working on module two. Let's practice. Is she still working on module two? That's right. She's still working on module two. She's not finished yet. And this is also a module. This is a lunar module. They landed on the moon in the lunar module. This thing is called a lunar module. Let's practice. What do you call this? What is it called? That's right. It's called a lunar module. And this word is capsule. Again, the stress is on the first syllable, so the second syllable is short. It's not capsule, it's capsule, with a dark L at the end. Capsule. So we see the medicine is available in tablets and capsules. The tablet is the round one, and the capsule is the one that looks like a cylinder. One tablet or two capsules. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. Let's practice. Is the medicine available in tablets and capsules? That's right. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. So you have a choice. Now let's look at this word. This word is ridicule. We see the stress on the first syllable and the third syllable. So we pronounce it long. It's not ridicule or ridicule. It's ridicule. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L at the end of the word. Ridicule. Ridicule is a verb. It means to make fun of someone or to make someone look ridiculous. It's not nice to ridicule people. And if I change the verb with ing, ridiculing. Is the L a dark L or a light L? That's right. It's a light L because it's between vowels. It's different. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. You still have the long oo sound. Ridicule. Remember with the e sound. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. The boy is ridiculing the girl. It's not nice to ridicule people. Let's practice. Is it nice to ridicule people? That's right. It's not nice to ridicule people. 
And is the boy ridiculing the girl? That's right. The boy is ridiculing the girl. Now let's look at this word. Ridiculous. The stress moved to the second syllable. Ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short. It's not you, it's ridicu. You still have the y sound. Y, y. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short. Uh, uh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. The boy is trying to make the girl look ridiculous. He's ridiculing her, so he's trying to make her look ridiculous. Let's practice. Is he trying to make her look ridiculous? That's right. He's trying to make her look ridiculous. It's not nice. So remember, we have a lot of different spelling patterns to make the sound ool, and sometimes yule. And we also learned how to identify the dark L from the light L and how to pronounce it correctly. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.